this thing on? Okay, cue exciting podcast intro. We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads, so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Iman the Messenger, also known as Emmanuel. Um, And yeah, man, um, the sun has been coming out a lot more recently in the UK, um, which has been such a blessing. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when the weather's bad, like <laughs> it's just it it just puts a downer on so many things, you know. Um, those of us in the UK, because I'm I'm sure I have like listeners from different parts of the world, but in the UK, uh, it tends to be gloomy, grey, dark. Uh, it tends to be like we tend to have a lot of overcast weather, um, and so we don't get a lot of sunshine like all the time. Um, and even when it is spring or summer, it does not mean that it's going to be sunny. Like there's no guarantee, you know? Um, so it's been nice, man. It's been a nice, um, few weeks of sunshine, but, uh, we are forecasted to have a week of clouds and rain. So, um, yeah, anyway. Pray for us in the UK uh, <laughs> that we have good weather and we get to just enjoy life just a bit more. But um, yeah, man, how are you? How are you doing? I ask that every single episode because I genuinely do wonder and I genuinely do want to know, like, how are you doing? Um, comment it if you're watching this on YouTube. Comment how you're doing. Uh, comment what you need prayer for. Um, comment some achievements you know some creative achievements some achievements in your callings um i would love to read those things like that they're, they're, they're encouraging you know um and obviously the prayers are um something that i can pray into as well um just so you know that like you're not alone in anything that you're struggling with you're not alone in anything you're going through and that this channel doesn't just serve to equip you but um i also do want to pray for you as well so um please let me know um but yeah i mean as you've seen um on this title uh the title of this podcast episode is fulfill your purpose not your potential managing gifts um the reason why we're going with this episode is because i actually put out a poll uh i think it was earlier in the year when i started this podcast and i said hey like what kind of topics would you guys want me to cover? And um, I put down, I think, maybe like five different options, right, Uh, that I felt led to kind of speak about, you know, on this podcast. And um, one of the the, the one with the highest votes was managing multiple gifts. Um, And, you know, this is, um, this is quite, uh, I guess, up my up my alley in a sense because um if you read the description you know of this podcast or this youtube channel um and you don't know who i am name's emmanuel um i am quite multifaceted in the giftings that i've um been given by god um i'm a poet author a songwriter i can sing um i can preach i can teach um 
uh, screenwriting, script writing. Um, yeah, <laughs> just a lot of different gifts. And then there's the spiritual gifts too. You know, I can prophesy. Um, I have the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Um, I have the gift of healing as well. And um, oh gosh, yeah. And sometimes the gift of faith as well comes as well. I, I have been involved in um, in speaking the word of God to people and, and miracles happening in their life, literally the next week or the following day or whatnot. So um, it's an interesting space to be in. And I understand why that topic was the most uh, voted, I guess topic and it wasn't voted by a lot of people uh it was a very small very very small number but it was the most you know out of the ones that were put there so um i get it you know it can be really difficult to navigate having multiple gifts because on one hand you want to make sure that you aren't wasting any of your gifts but at the on the other hand you want to make sure that you aren't um i guess a jack of all trades and a master of none or you're not getting burnt out from using all of your gifts, you know? Um, you want to know when to use them, when not to use them, and all these other things. And I feel like I've been on this journey for quite some time. You know, I would say that I've been operating in these different giftings um, over the course of eight years now. Seven, eight years. And so hopefully, man, I can shed some insight um, into how you best manage your multiple gifts um, honor God, glorify um, his name, and um, yeah, maximize um, maximize your purpose, right, uh, with these gifts. And so, uh, buckle up, we're going to go through some scriptures, and um, yeah, hopefully I can just kind of shed some light on what has helped me to manage uh, having multiple uh, giftings. So, we're going to read... Uh, John 2, verses 1 to 4, says, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, What business do you have with me, woman? My hour has not yet come. Um, and so, yeah, this is an interesting scripture. This is... Jesus's first, I guess, recorded miracle um, after his um, his call into ministry, and um, you know, the, the wine has run out in, in the wedding, right? And Mary knows that Jesus can perform miracles, right? She knows that um, he has that he has those gifts. Um, but Jesus says a phrase here. He says, "What business do you have with me, woman? My hour has not yet come." And I mean. It's funny that he calls her a woman, uh, even though <laughs> that's his mom. <laughs> but clearly Jesus was speaking from his divine identity rather than his human um, identity at that time. Um, and he says, you know, yeah, what business do you have with me, woman? My hour has not yet come. And here when he says my hour has not yet come, we know that he's referring to the hour of his death and resurrection, uh, you know, his his ultimate purpose right in terms of when he'll be truly truly revealed to the world and he, you know jesus was focused on being revealed to the world through his death and resurrection that was his that was his ultimate purpose it was for the salvation of mankind right it was to die for sins uh to rise again um and to and to offer salvation um to us right so we get a clue here actually um, as to how we can frame having multiple gifts, right? The clue here is purpose. It's purpose, right? It is understanding what you're ultimately called for in this life. And I think for us as Christians, like the general ultimate purpose is that we know God and we make him known. That's the general ultimate purpose. And that looks different for each person um in the way that that manifests obviously but that's the ultimate purpose right and if we start from there then it it, it can get easy or easier to manage multiple giftings and we'll go through more scriptures to 
um, try and understand this a bit more. So I want you to keep that in mind. You know, Jesus keeps in mind his ultimate purpose, right? He keeps in mind his ultimate purpose. We've got John 7, uh, verses 3 to 6. So his brothers said to him, move on from here and go into Judea so that your disciples also may see your works, which you are doing. Um, for no one does anything in secret when he himself is striving to be known publicly. If you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. But not even his brothers believed him. So Jesus said to them, my time is not yet here, but your time is always ready. This is, um, Jesus is being spoken to by his brothers. Um, and his brothers weren't believing that he was the, the, the Messiah at the time, right? At the time of this, um, this conversation. And they're saying to him, hey, like, why don't you just like go crazy with your gifts? Basically, like, why don't you just heal everyone and prophesy to everyone and just do miracles all over Judea? Like, just, just go crazy. Make your name known, you know? Um, in a sense, maximize your potential. Like, Jesus, you have so much potential. You have all these gifts you have all of this power. Why don't you just use it to make your name known? Why don't you use it to be famous, right? And Jesus goes, my time is not yet here, but your time is always ready. And I think he actually said that to them personally. This is just my opinion. I think he said that to them actually as a self-reflection thing. I think he was letting them know that like the way that you guys operate, you operate on fame and you operate on you know, there's always a time and opportunity for us to get more famous. I don't operate like that. God, God does not operate like that. God operates on times and seasons and he cares about purpose. He cares about when we do things, how we do things and um, what we are doing things for. God cares about the how, the what and the why. He cares about that. And we see it very clearly from this scripture. Jesus' brothers are pressing him and saying, hey, make yourself known. And he is doing the complete opposite. He's saying, no, I will use these gifts at the timings that they're supposed to be used. I want us to keep that in mind, right? This is not about, this is why I, I titled this podcast episode, Fulfill Your Purpose, Not Your Potential. Because God will only care about what you purpose, purposefully did with him and for him in the end rather than i maxed out on the potential that i had and that's funny because you know it's, it's such a, a a doctrine of the world right it's such a teaching of the world to maximize your potential right like but god doesn't measure things like that god measures it in this way did you do what I asked you to do with what I gave you, right? God has a specific purpose for how he wants us to use the gifts that he gave to us. And we see that clearly depicted here in this scripture where Jesus says, my time is not yet here, but your time is always ready. So how did Jesus know his purpose and timings to use certain gifts? Because that, that's the question, right? How do I manage my, my gifts then? How, like, how did Jesus know his time? How did Jesus know when to use his gifts and when not to use his gifts, right? He's our example um, as unboxed, called, and creative people. And so let's look at that, right? So Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every matter under heaven. I love this scripture because it gives a, a lay of the land, right? There is an appointed time for everything. Not some things, not most things. Everything. Which means that there is an appointed time for us to use our gifts. Because everything is everything, right? Everything <laughs> comes under this scripture. There is an appointed time for everything. Just that there's a time to eat. There's a time to sleep. There's a time to wake up. There's a time... Uh, to jog there's a time to record <laughs> there's a time uh man there's just a time for everything right there's a time for war there's a time to build up to tear down 
There's a time for everything. Let's read Daniel chapter 2, 20 to 21. And I'm doing this to give you a framework, right, as to how you can go away and know how to manage your gifts, right? I want to give you a framework before I, um, you know, just talk and kind of uh, converse with you. So Daniel 2 verses 20 to 21. Daniel said, may the name of God be blessed forever and ever for wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes the times and the periods. He removes kings and appoints kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to people of understanding. So Daniel ties this together, right? That Ecclesiastes scripture that says, there is an appointed time for everything. Daniel ties this up and lets us know that the person who is behind the appointed time for everything is God. God is behind the appointed time for everything, right? So that leads us now to John 5, 19 to 20. And this is how Jesus knew his times and seasons for using his different gifts. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does in the same way. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. And the father will show him greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. Wow. So let's slowly go through that scripture, right? Truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. So Jesus had, how do I say this? Jesus had resolved. He had, he had a resolve in himself that I will do nothing unless I first see my father doing it. Uh, unless I first had communication with him and seen him do it or, or been led to doing it by him or convicted to do it by my father in heaven. Right. So this speaks about relationship now. And really and truly it is the depth of your relationship is what will help you to understand when and when not to use certain gifts. That that's really the crux of us knowing how to manage multiple gifts. It's about relationship. Right. And so he goes on, he keeps on saying that, um, uh, for whatever the father does, these things the son also does in the same way. And then he speaks about this. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. So we see here that love is a real big factor. Like having a loving relationship with God is, is a big factor behind how we use our spiritual gifts. And when when to use them, right? Like, Jesus says here that if we know how loved we are by God and we receive that and we immerse ourselves in that more than, more than trying to plan our creativity, more than trying to manage our multiple, our multiple gifts and figure out, oh man, like what am I supposed to do here? Should I do poetry today? Should I do singing today? When am I going to make music? When am I going to do this? Like, you know, these are some of the thoughts that I have had, right, where I'm like, okay, God, you've given me so many gifts and you have given me prophecies as well and you've confirmed those prophecies with multiple people that I am supposed to do X, Y, Z over the course of my life. But like when, when, how, where? I find those things out in the secret place. Spending time with him. He will tell you, like he will tell you he will show you and he will also confirm to you through conversations with other people what you're supposed to be doing in a season, you know? Um, each season is different. In one season, God may have you doing poetry, I'm talking about myself, I use myself as, as an example. Uh, in, in another season, he may have you doing music. In another season, he may have you podcast recording. In another season, he may have you preaching and teaching. In another season, he may have you evangelizing. 
in another season, he may have you prophesying a bit more frequently, you know? And the, the way that you understand that rhythm is by every single day looking at God. Like, like it is, if you are someone with multiple gifts, if you don't cultivate a practice of communing with God every single day to see him, to hear him, to feel him, to, to ingest his word and to know his ways and know his principles, you're going to find it really hard to know when to use your gifts and when not to use your gifts, right? And so this is what Jesus is talking about here. He's saying that, hey, like, um, I only do what I see the Father doing. And that's how Jesus knew his timings. That's how Jesus knew his ultimate purpose. That's how Jesus knew what to focus on and what not to focus on, right? And... I guess a side note here is when you are spending ample time with God and he is the one that you're getting all of your direction from as to when you use your gifts and when you don't use your gifts, you won't be swayed by people, mm, which is beautiful. We saw in the last scripture that Jesus's brothers were trying to press him, right? They were trying to say, hey, just use your gifts and become famous, bro. Like, like fulfill your potential. But Jesus was so focused on fulfilling his purpose and that actually guarded him. That guarded him from being a slave to people, which is really important because in the end of the day, we're not going to stand before people in the end of the day. We're going to stand before God. And he's going to ask us, hey, son, hey, daughter, um, did you do what I asked you to do? Did you fulfill the purpose as to which I gave you those gifts? He's not going to ask you, did you fulfill your potential in the eyes of man or in the eyes of people? So it's a really, it's, it's, it's a, like, you have to love God more than your creativity because your, your life depends on it, right? And the life of others depends on it, you know? Like, if we don't fulfill the purposes that God has for us with our gifts, certain people won't be saved, certain people won't be blessed, certain people won't be touched. But what will happen is we will, if we maximize our potential, it might be that we become famous and it might be that we, we, we um, entertain a lot of people and um, we temporarily, uh, how do I say this? We temporarily strike awe in, in certain people, but did we actually fulfill the purpose in people's lives and draw them to God in the way that he wanted us to draw them? by using our gifts in a purposeful way. And these are the questions. These are the things that I think about. And these are the scriptures that have helped me to manage my multiple gifts and to know year by year what I ought to be doing with God. You know, what I try to do sometimes is just at the beginning of each year or just, just before the beginning of each year, I go on like a long, just, just a break, you know, I go on like maybe like a long fast or something. And I pray and I, I ask him, Lord, with the gifts I have and the prophecies over my life, what do I focus on this year? And he will tell me, right? Like he will, he will bring up these things in my heart and I write them down and I commit it to him and I go, okay, this is the year. But I still keep my ears open and my eyes open for the little side, I guess the side missions, right? The, the side quests that God may open my eyes to. It's like Jesus. Jesus had his main calling, which was going to the cross, but Jesus still kept his ears and his eyes open for the side missions as well. The side missions of meeting the Samaritan woman at the well, um, doing this miracle, you know, that, that he didn't plan to do, but in that moment, he was able to hear God and go, okay, you want me to do this as well? No worries. I'll do this miracle now. And so it's important that we, we are committing the plans and the workings of our gifts to God because he has a purpose for our gifts. He's not interested in potential fulfillment. He is interested in purpose fulfillment. And another beautiful example of this is Mary and Martha, right? You've got Mary, she's sitting at the feet of Jesus and she's listening to him and she's being uh, washed by him and she's being, uh, what's this word, fed by him spiritually, right? And um, I'm sure that that would serve her in later seasons because, you know, as you get poured into by Jesus, you're then able to 
pour out, you know, in the right places and spaces and at the right times. Whereas Martha was worried about many things, right? We can relate this to ourselves as cool and creative people, right? Um, who, are, who are managing multiple gifts. We could be worried about the multiple gifts. We're worried, oh God, how am I going to manage this? Oh, when, when's this going to happen? When's that going to happen? Lord, am I delayed? Am I out of time? Um, have I been wasting time? Like, what should I do? And God is saying, there is one thing that is important. And I will not take that away from Mary. Sitting at my feet. Because it's, it's from sitting at his feet. It's, it's, from making, it's from making sitting at his feet the priority that the managing gifts come into alignment because he tells us what to do with what he's given us and it becomes simple and easy but if you're trying to plan it yourself like you are trying to plan how to manage your gifts by yourself without sitting at the feet of Jesus you are going to get confused and you're going to get like really frustrated with having multiple gifts and it's, it's going to become more of a torment than a blessing and, and that's not what God wants for you God gave you multiple gifts because he, he entrusted you with multiple gifts. Like he gave them to you for a reason, right? He gave them to you for a purpose. It wasn't a mistake. And so they're not supposed to torment you. If having multiple gifts is tormenting you at the moment or is like difficult to manage, it might be because you're doing more management than you're doing sitting at Jesus' feet to ask and to find out what you're supposed to do with the gifts um yeah i hope that helps um anybody who is feeling like that i just felt the need to say that um yeah ultimately this all comes back down to obedience right um this all comes back down to obedience as i said before if you if you love god and you spend time with him then you're gonna obey his commandments and his commandments will involve the usage of your gifts. Um, and I think also one of the reasons why we find it difficult to, to wait and to sit and to trust in God to help us to fulfill our purpose with our gifts rather than fulfilling potential is just because of the world that we live in. I think that the world is go, go, go. And... Everyone seems to be doing big things, right? Um, and so we can start comparing ourselves to other people as to how we should use our gifts, right? You've got this person using their gift in this really big and elaborate way. And maybe that's not your calling. Maybe like God wants you to use your gifts in the small ways that you have been using, that you have been using them. And maybe you're actually going to get a bigger reward for that in heaven because you obeyed him maybe you using it in those small ways will have a bigger quality impact on certain people than this like mass impact that is really lacking in substance because there are people out there right with loads of followings loads of this loads of that but the actual substance like the substance impact is not great and it's not people's yokes aren't broken chains aren't broken but people are entertained and their ears are tickled and, you know, they're kind of, um, what's this word called? Pandered to, right? And then you've got other people who are called to the big and also are breaking chains. But that, once again, that's purpose. Like God has just purposed that for their life. You have to find what it is that God has for you and be content in it. Um, and once again, it comes from spending time with him. It's difficult to be content if you're not spending time with the Lord or if that's not your main, uh, your main priority. And that brings me on to trust now. That's another thing. The second, I think the second reason why it's really difficult managing gifts or, or um, fulfilling purpose rather than potential is trust. We, we, we don't trust that God has more invested interest in our gifts than we do. We don't trust that God will utilize our gifts at the right time. <laughs> we don't trust 
that God is loving and that he is a good shepherd and leads us to using our gifts at the right time and the right moments. And I think that's something that we have to sit with and wrestle with and settle with, you know. All of these things are so important in um, managing multiple uh, gifts, fulfilling our purpose rather than our potential. And so I think, you know, one of the last things that I'll kind of say for this podcast episode, and I know it's been a short one, but hopefully it's packed enough information in it uh, for you to go away and to learn from. Uh, one of the last things that I'll say is that in the end of the day, as I, I said this earlier, but just to remind you as well that obedience is the most important thing. You can be doing 10,000 things, but if God didn't ask you to do it, it's all going to be a waste. There are two scriptures that come to my mind regarding obedience and regarding how important this is. First scripture is where Jesus says, you did this in my name. You cast out devils. You healed the sick. Uh, you preached. You prophesied. Uh, we did all of these things in your name, um, Jesus. But Jesus will say to them, I, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. You who practice iniquity, get away from me. You know, it is a sin. You know, disobedience is a sin. Like, disobedience is iniquity. And we can do all these things that God didn't ask us to do. Or we can let him know us and, and you know what I mean? Let him really know us and us really know him. And then from that place, do what he's asking us to do. That's the most important thing. So if you are doing anything that God has not asked you to do, I would implore you to stop it because it's a detriment to you. And God has better things in store for your life than what you have planned, you know? Um, there's another, the second scripture that came to my mind is where Paul is talking about judgment. And he's talking about the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment for us as Christians, right? There's two, there's two judgments. There's a judgment for unbelievers, which is the, the white throne judgment, the judgment of the Father. And then the, there's the judgment seat of Christ, which is um, where Christ judges our works, right? He judges our works. And <laughs> Paul basically says that, like, Christ is going to judge our motives. He's going to judge the works that we did, whether they are actually of him or whether they're not, right? And... We don't want to get to that day and we did so many things with our gifts, but we didn't do the one thing with our gifts that God asked us to do <laughs> or that God wanted to tell us to do, but we were so busy managing all of our gifts and just doing stuff that we never slowed down to actually stop and hear him and do what we're supposed to do with our gifts. We don't want to be those people, you know? Um, and so take that on board, you know, uh, let's really reset this week. If, if you, if you have been finding it difficult to manage multiple gifts, like this is your moment, like this is your sign. This is your confirmation to like, stop, slow down, hit the drawing board again. Maybe, maybe fast, maybe go on a long fast and really ask God, okay, like God, like these gifts aren't mine. You gave them to me. They're your gifts. This body isn't even mine. It's your temple, right? Like, I'm not even my own. Like, with Christ, I am dead. I've, I've been crucified with Christ. It is now Christ who lives and not me. And so I'm here to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Like, I'm here to fulfill my purpose on this planet. Like, you bought me with a price. And so, Lord, what should I do with my gifts? How should I operate them? Do I have a fear that I'm not going to see the fulfillment of certain promises in my life referring to the gifts you've given me? If I do have a fear, God, let's, let's talk about that. Let's, let's sort that out. God, would you heal me of that fear? You know, these are the prayers and things that we ought to be praying, right? That will help us to manage our gifts well. That will help us to be just like Jesus where we are content in the timings of the Father. Jesus was such a whole person that 
he didn't have to maximize his potential. He didn't have to run around and heal everyone and do all this stuff. He 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 could still be, ah oh man, Jesus could still be so holy in his identity, but just heal one person here, prophesize one person here. But ultimately he had in his mind, no, like I know my purpose. I know why God has given me these gifts and how he wants me to use them. I know why the Father has entrusted me with this. And um, it's just beautiful. You know, if Jesus, who is God, who is God the Son, can be um, so um, humble, right, and manage his gifts in that way, we, we ought to do the same thing. Um, and so fulfill your purpose, not your potential. This has been Eman the Messenger. I pray that this has blessed you. And uh, till next time, I'm out. Peace. Hey, Eman here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode. Um, we really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented um, or given the review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time.